Hi guys. So last time we talked about the three formulas to find the area of a triangle. The first one is what I refer to the geometric way, which says that the area of a triangle it equals to one half base times height. And let me propose three scenarios of triangle. The first one is like the easy one when we have like a height in here or the altitude and the space would be the bottom one, which is this one. So we're gonna multiply these two and then we divide by two, okay? The other formula, I mean the other scenario is when we have an obtuse triangle. And in here, the base would be like, we project from one vertex down to the base. And it's perpendicular right there. So then this, the dashed line there, that would be the H, the high or the altitude. And the base to that high would be this sign here, we call it B. And the last scenario is like the special case of a right triangle. In here, since we already have a right triangle in here, so this one would be our height and this one will be our base. Okay, so let me kind of like trace them out a little bit in here. And in this case in here, be careful, make sure you can tell the difference between the height and the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always the longest side of the triangle, which is always opposite to the right angle, okay? So make sure you can tell that the hypotenuse is the longest side and the height in here, the altitude in here is just one of the leg, okay? Don't get confused with, between the two. And another scenario or another formula that we had is um, when we have the area equals to one half, for example, A times B times psi of big C, angle C. And we use this formula when we have the case of SAS for example, we have like a, a triangle in here. And I don't know, let's say that the problem gives us something like little c in here, angle b in here, and then a little a in here. Then the area in here, it equals to one half a, a times c times side b, the angle in between. Okay. And the last formula that we learned the last time is the Heron's formula. The application for Heron's formula is when we have the case of SSS. For example, if the problem gives us something like little a in here, little b and little c in here, then Heron said that uh, the area, it equals to the square root of s times s minus a times s minus b times s minus c, okay? And in here, s, it equals to half of the perimeter so half means two, and the perimeter in here, it means that you go around a triangle and then you add up all the size. Okay, after that, you plug it in, um, you plug at S into the formula, and then you find the area, okay? And for today, for chapter 10, let me introduce you guys something new. So in the past, we are familiar with the X, Y coordinate. We're familiar with the, let me highlight in here, let me use... Uh, blue in here. In the past, we're familiar with the rectangular coordinate. It means to, it means that um, it's the x y system. It's where you have like um, this one is the x axis and this one is the y axis. And for example, a point here, say for like something like this in here, it would be I don't know something like I don't know like negative five and then two for example. So this one is the x y coordinate system, or you can call it the rectangular coordinate. Okay, today we're gonna introduce you a new system. We call it the polar coordinate. Let me underline in there. And what is special about this polar coordinate is that in here, we don't we don't have like two axes anymore. We're just gonna have one axis. We call this one the polar axis. And this point here, we call it the pole. Okay, so this one will be the pole and this axis in here is the polar axis, okay? So in this picture in here, I kind of like put the two coordinates together, the X and Y coordinate in here, or like the X, Y axis, axis in here are for the X, Y coordinate. And the other one, the polar system in the pole is for the polar coordinate, okay? Actually, let me just put this one in green too so you guys can tell which one is which. So what is the difference and similarity between the two coordinates, right? So the similarity in here is that the origin in the x, y coordinate, let me see where did I put the origin, what well, didn't mention it, but uh, technically in the polar, in the rectangular coordinate, the origin 
or should I say the point zero zero, it would be represented by the pole in polar coordinate, okay? And instead of having like two um, axes in here, instead of having like x, y axis in the polar coordinates, we just have what, like one axis, we call it the polar axis, okay? And to talk about like the pictures that I have in here, let's go to the next page. And um, okay, let me recall like the idea of quotients really quick in here. Um, Remember back in the day, we used to have like four quotients, right? Like this would be question one, and then this is our question two, and then question three, and then question four, okay? The four questions are applied to the x, y coordinate. And if you find it like simple to understand or like find it easier to remember, you can also think about the polar co coordinates like the same way. We're also gonna have like four questions, but we're not gonna call it like question one or like question four anymore. They have, don't have names for it. At least I don't know that they have names for it. Okay, um, but just imagine if you're gonna have like four um, like in, invisible like uh, walls in there to like separate you guys from like the four coordinate, then you will have like four quadrant ish. Okay, and in fact, every point of polar coordinates can be represented by two ways. Okay, so as you can see in each quadrant, there are always like two ways in there. In quadrant one. I put like one way in there, but in the next page, I'm going to elaborate why there should be like two ways. And I'm going to tell you the second way, the second version to represent the point of R comma theta. Okay. Oh, by the way, one more thing really quick before we move on to the next page in there. In X, Y um, coordinate in here, the point can be represented by X comma Y like this. And in polar coordinate, the point would be represented by R comma theta. And we're going to talk about this one in the next second also, but just remember the difference in here. X, Y coordinate, we have like two two uh, numbers in here. One one is the X and the other is Y. Polar coordinate, we have two numbers also, but the first one is the radius and the second one is the angle, theta, okay? So let me move on to the second page. Okay. So... Imagine you're going to have like four quadrant, okay? Let me put the first quadrant in black in here. So again, let me start by drawing the by drawing out the polar coordinate by getting like a pole there and a polar axis in there. For example, if you start up with this vector in here or like this point here, the angle from here to here going counterclockwise, so it's a positive theta. And this gap in here, this distance in here, we call it the radius, R. By the way, let me just define something really quick in here. Let me put it in red. R in here would be acute, okay? And again, if you guys don't remember the definition of acute, acute in here, it tells you that the angle has to be less than 90 degrees. So that means you cannot have like 180 degrees or like 100 degrees or not even like 91 degrees. It has to be sharply like less than 90 degrees, okay? And back to the problem in here, for example, this is the pole, this is the radius, this is the point that we want to represent. We kind of call this one R and theta, okay? Because R is for the distance from the pole and theta is for the, the amount of rotation or like the angle measurement from the polar axis, okay? And in fact, there's a second way to represent this angle, okay? Just imagine that you can like pull down, you can extend the radius further so this gap in here would be the same um, distance as this one. My eyes are not like scaled. Well, the pictures is not like to scale, but just ima imagine that you're going to have the same distance in here. This one is R and then this one is also R. Okay. So your point is right here, right? But you want to use the opposite direction of your radius. That means the radius in here would be negative radius. And the angle, you have to measure the angle from here all the way to here, right? So it, just imagine like if you can extend the polar coordinate a little bit in here. I mean the polar axis a little bit in here. Then this top half the circle in here, that would be like 180, right? Or like pi. And the theta and a little extra piece in here would be theta. So the angle that we have in here would be pi plus theta. That's the second way that I was talking about in a previous page. So for this one point here, we have two versions to represent it. This one is the first version, and this one is a, the outer version, okay? And let me separate out, like, the four quadrant in here before we move on. 
Okay, and another scenario is when, say, okay, let me put, like, this is quotient one, okay, and then this is quotient two, and then we're gonna have quotient three, and also quotient four. Okay, so say, again, if we have something in quotient two, for example, first of all, we're gonna start up by drawing the pole in here, and the uh, polar axis in here. For example, if we have something in question two, say something like this, the point is right here, right? You want to figure out, you want to figure out like how to present this point here in the polar coordinate, right? There's two ways to do this, but because theta is acute in here, so this theta in here would not be theta, right? Like because this one is like way too big for like an angle, right? This one in here, if you can eyeball it out, is bigger than 90, so there's no way this is our theta, right? So let me just like cross out the theta in here. And let me erase theta in here before it gets to your head. Okay, so because theta in here, it must be acute. So we're going to do the same trick as the last time. We're going to extend the uh, R in here a little bit. Same gap. And this one is R while the other one is like negative R, like R if you want to call it this way. And again, the, the, the angle from the polar axis to the other direction of R in here is acute, right? So we're going to call this angle theta, okay? So to present this point here, the first way, the way that we base up on theta in here is when we use the opposite direction of radius. That's why we call it negative r, okay? But if you think about this, theta in here, it shouldn't be theta because it goes clockwise, right? So in here, it should be negative r because it goes clockwise, okay? And the other version that we can represent it is, is when we use this angle in here. But we don't know this angle, right? So same trick, if we extend the other side of the polar axis in here, like the full circle, the distance from here to here, the whole thing from here to here is 180, right? And we know that the little gap from here to here is theta. Let me erase that stuff. That means that the, the angle from here to here that would be 180 minus theta, or like pi minus eight theta, okay? And in this time, the rotation stop at the, like, direct R, at the positive R. So we're going to use positive R and pi minus theta, okay? Move on to the third quotient in here. Again, we're going to start with the pole in here and a polar axis like this, okay? And let's draw something right now at the third quotient, something like this, okay? So we wonder how can we represent this point in polar coordinate, right? First of all, if you kind of like draw the outer angle from two direction, you can draw it like like this, and you can draw it the other way, right? And then if you notice, actually none of these will give you the acute angle, right? So backtrack a little bit in here. How can we find acute angle in here? Let extend R. Let me put like R in here. And let let me extend R in here. Then voila, we're gonna have like a little um theta in here because it's acute now, right? And to represent this angle in here, because we're using the opposite direction of R, then we're gonna use negative R. My negative is ugly, so let me rewrite a negative in here. It's still ugly. Okay, negative R. And the angle in here is theta, positive theta. Why is it positive? Because it goes counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. And my bad in here, this one is a bad notation. This one, it should be clockwise. So it should be CW rather. CW. Okay. So back to this thing. Um, this one is the first way that we can probably send this point right here, right? The second way is that if we go ahead and we use this angle right here, and then we wonder how much um, rotation it, it costs to get down to like the positive um, R in here, then we can use a little trick and extend the polar axis in here. So in this case in here, again, it's gonna be like have a little bit more than half the circle, right? A half the circle in here is pi or like 180 degrees. A little bit more in it, we go like theta uh, a little bit more. So that means we're gonna have something like pi plus theta, okay? So the second way to represent this information is when we have 
the direct R or the positive R and the angle would be pi plus theta. Okay. And um, make sure you remember or like make sure you know the difference between like pi minus theta and then pi plus theta. Okay. If you notice the rotation of pi minus theta is like, is like it's not yet a, a half of the circle, right? It's like a little bit less than half of the circle. And the notation of pi plus theta is when you have something like beyond half a circle, okay? Same thing goes with this one. Like pi plus theta is when some when you have something beyond half a circle, or like more than half a circle, okay? And let's talk about the last case in here. I'm gonna use it in yellow. So we're gonna start again with, uh, oops, uh, back. Okay, pen, yellow. Okay, so again, we're gonna start with the pole in here and then also a, a polar axis in here. And just imagine we have some angle in here. No, we have some point in here in the fourth quadrant. Okay, first thing first, we have to find our theta, right? And in here, lucky enough, we do have an acute angle, right? We call it theta, but because it goes counterclockwise, or it goes clockwise my bad so that's why it's negative okay let me erase this one and let me just put clockwise in here i'm really bad with the um um direction sometimes i don't know why so this one it go clockwise so that's why it's negative it, if it goes counterclockwise it's going to be positive angle and it go, and if it goes clockwise it's going to be negative angle okay so then we have our theta on ready, and this one is our r. So then the first notation for this angle, it will be pretty much easy. It's like straight, straight, straightforward, right? It's just going to be like r and negative theta, okay? But what if we want to use the other, the, the other direction or the other side of r? Then first of all, we know that we're going to have something like negative r, right? But how about the angle? How can we get to the angle, right? So let's go ahead and extend uh, the other side of r. So we're gonna have something like this, right? And still, this is R. And if we go like this to get the angle in here, okay, think for yourself for a second in here, do you think it's gonna be pi minus theta or pi plus theta and why is it so? Okay, think, think about it for like five seconds. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, if your answer is pi minus theta, you correct, good job. Why? Because in here, this one is not yet like a certain circle, right? It's not yet half of a circle, right? It's less than half a circle. That's why we go with a minus, not a plus. If it were to exceed half a circle, then it's going to be pi plus theta, okay? So the angle in here, again, is pi minus theta. And because we use the outer side of the radius, that's why it's negative r, okay? And keep this in mind. Um, don't try to memorize these because trust me, I tried it and it doesn't work for me like to memorize them all. It's really hard. So my cap kind of like advice from all of this is that, um, okay, let me change the color first. Let's do orange, I guess. Okay, so my adv advice is that um, make sure you remember there are always two ways to represent any, any point in a polar coordinate, right? So in the first question, we have like one way in here. This one is the direct way where we use the positive R. And the second way is the indirect way where we use the opposite side of R, okay? Same goes for the second quotient. We have the direct way where we have where we use R, and we have the indirect way where we use negative R. Same goes for third quotient, direct way and indirect way. And then third, um, fourth quotient, this one is our direct way, and this one is our indirect way, okay? And the way to think about it is that theta is always a cute angle, right? So if you have something that's, that looks like it's bigger than 90, don't think about that angle as theta, okay? So do something else. Like, I don't know, like just do something. Like play with it around. Sometimes you just have to extend the R to the other side to get your theta. And some other time you just have to extend the polar axis to get the measurement, okay? Play around with it. It will make sense at the end. If not, let me know. I'm going to explain in more details if you guys need it, okay? So um, that's about like um, the last, okay, so this page is about like um, this in here. Let me highlight it. Okay, so the, 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 the page that we just went over is about this picture in here. That's just like some explanation, okay? 
And then let's move on to the next page. Okay, the first key important thing in here is to plot points using polar coordinates, okay? So this one is pretty much what we just talked about in the in the like in the previous page. So usually we're gonna have like a point. Um, we call it r and theta, right? Like in in like the easy way in the ideal case when we have everything in the first quadrant ish. The point would be r comma theta, right? And again, theta in here because we're using like the concept of the uh, of the circle. So a point can be represented by different angles in the circle, right? You can go for one circle, you can go for two circles, and so so on. For example, uh, let me give you something like, I don't know, like this one is a pole, and then we're going to have like a polar axis in here. For example, if I give you something like the radius in here is like 3, and the angle in here is like 30 degrees positive because it goes um, counterclockwise in here, then the way that I represent this point, I'm going to go for... 3 and 30, right? I cannot write. Okay, there we go. I cannot write in that part. I don't know why. Okay, let me write it in here. So the first way to think about it is that I'm going to write it as 3 and 30 degrees. Or usually in, in polar coordinate, we're going to uh, have to get used to uh, the idea of pi, our radian system. So let me convert 30 degrees to radian system and in radian is power of six, right? Another way to think about it is that what if I don't want to go for 30? What if I want to go for not a circle after 30, right? So the angle would go like this, right? So I'm going to get something like 30 plus 360, right? Which is like 390 in here. And let me grab my calculator really quick to convert from 390 to radius, I mean to radian, I'm going to get something like 13 over 13 pi over 6, right? So this is the same thing as 3 and then 13 pi over 6. And I show you the second way to do this one is that when you extend the radius, then you're going to have something like negative 3 in here. But um, we need to look for the angle from here, no, from here all the way to here, right? And the way that we do that is that we add one, 180 with 30. I'm so sorry for the space in here. It's supposed to be more organized, but then I didn't leave a lot of like space in here. Okay, so after you do the math, you're going to get something like 210. And then if you convert it back to radian by divided by 180, we're going to get something like 7 pi over 6. Okay, and notice that the angle change and then the, the radius also change, okay? And again, if you want, you can do the same trick in here. If you don't want seven pi over six in here, you can add seven pi over six to two pi. That means you go in for not a circle, right? And then you're gonna get something like negative three and then 19 pi over six. I'm running out of space in here, but this one is my 19 over six, okay? And then close parentheses, and then this one is my three, okay? Again, if this like confuses you, uh, don't worry because we're gonna talk again about these like four ways in a minute, okay? And let's talk about the definition in here. So there's two things about like the formulas in here. The first thing is that um, every angle can be represented by r theta or negative r and then theta plus pi. r theta is when we have like the original, like the direct way and r and negative r is when we have like the indirect way when use when we use the opposite side of radius okay and as for the 2 pi in here is the relationship between like the point in each circle so it's like you have like one point there but it could be like in the first circle and or in the second circle and the third circle if you go ahead and add the same point by like 4 pi or like 6 pi i don't know like the more you add the more circles you're going to get okay and then um, the coordinate for the polar, no, the coordinate for the pole would be zero and theta, okay? So really quick, just to compare between the, the xy coordinate and the polar coordinate. In xy coordinate, we have the origin, and the coordinate for the origin would be zero, zero. But in polar system, the the coordinates for the pole would be zero and theta, where zero is your radius and theta is your angle. Okay, so the pole could be represented differently. So um, say if I like the angle of like, I don't know, like pi, I guess, I can 
I can represent my pole as 0 and pi. If I don't like pi, I can also represent my pole as 0 and pi over 2, for example, or even pi over 3 and so on. Come on, let's work. It doesn't work. Okay, let me lower it down. Oh, there we go. Okay, and so on. Okay, so technically you can go for any angle. That's why I call it theta in general, because you can plug in any angle for the pole coordinates. Okay, and just a heads up in here, it is possible for R to be negative. Okay, so don't think about R like the radius radius, because remember there, there are always like two ways to represent an, a point in polar coordinates, right? The direct way and the indirect way. The direct way is when we use a positive R, and the indirect way is when we use a negative R. That's when we use the other side of the radius to represent your point, okay? And let's talk about the first example in here. Okay, so we have the point here. So let's first go ahead and plot it. So negative 2 is for the distance from, like, the point to the pole. So we start off ha with drawing, like, the pole in here and also the axis, the, pol the polar axis in here, okay? So the way that we start up is usually we have to define your theta first, okay? Like you have to find where is theta, right? So if you do the math in here, theta, if you convert it to degrees to make it easier for us to work with, you're going to do 2 times 180 divided by 3, and I get I got something like negative 120, right? So personally, I don't like negative angles, so that's why usually I'm going to convert it first back to like positive angle, okay? If you don't want to, it's fine too, but then usually... Um, I would convert it to positive or I just do both. Like I, I would do negative angle and positive angle just in case I need it. Okay. So if I want to convert it back to like positive angle, I'm going to add it up to like 360. And if I do that, I go 360 minus 120 and I'm got, and I got something like 240. Okay. And 240 degrees is like, it's bigger than 180 a little bit, but it's not bigger than like 270. Right. So that's, that means it's on the third quadrant. Okay. So that's why I draw my um, I draw my angle right here. Okay, this one is a little bit complicated. So okay, at this point, he's gonna ask me like, why this one is in like like solid uh, line while the other one is in dashed line, even though this angle in here is representing like two two forty, right? And I'm gonna tell you the reason why is that I have like a negative radius in here, okay? So even though at this point, at the blue point here for like P, P uh, prime or like P, I don't know, apostrophe, whatever you want to call it. I, I'm going to call it P prime for now or P, the blue P, okay? So for the blue P, it's not our P because this, the problem, it gives us a, an, an indirect um, way to do it, okay? So instead of having P in here, I'm going to shoot it across the pole and this is our P, okay? So then in here, the radius in here would be 2, and the point would be negative 2 and then negative 2 pi over 3. So this is the first way that I can represent my angle, and here's a picture for it, okay? And if we want to keep it simple, let's talk about this angle right here, right? So what do you think this angle would be? If from here to here is like one, negative 120, then from here to here, it would be 60, right? And 60 in radian, it will be pi over 3. So this one is the, is the way from the method. It gives us one way, right? And this one is by the picture. Okay, and I told you guys, like, if you want, you can add up the angle or, like, you can play around with the angle in here. So you can keep the, the two in here if you want to. You, you can do it in the direct way. And then as for the angle, you can change it, right? So pi over 3 is like 60. If you don't want to have like 60, you can represent it by, I don't know, like what is uh, another way to represent 60? You can do something like negative 300, right? So that's what I did in here. So let me color it in blue. So if you don't like 60, you can do negative 300, okay? And if you don't like it, you can have something like... I don't know, what is 60 plus 360? 60 plus 360 in here is 420. And if you convert it back to radian, you will have something like 7 uh, pi over 3. So another way to think about this one is that you can have something like, okay, let me change the color. Let me put it in, in blue maybe. Oh, no, red, 
Let's do red. I like red. Okay. Oh, no. Pen. Red. Okay. So another way to do this one is that you can do 2 and 7 pi over 3. And again, why do we get 7 pi over 3? It's because we add pi over 3 with 2 pi. Okay. It's like you go for another circle. Okay. And then if you want to keep the indirect weight in here, like if you want... No, I want to highlight this, not like... Okay, let's highlight this one. Let's use yellow, I guess. If you want to do it in the indirect way, you can do the same thing with this one, but then you have to change your angle, right? So the way that you can change your angle is that you can grab this um, angle in here and you can play around with it. You can like fulfill it up. You can like turn a negative angle to a positive angle or you can add it up to like 360 or 2 pi to travel to make it travel and not a circle and so on okay so there are like many possibilities to do this one there's more than one way to represent it and there's like a lot of ways okay but like at the end of the day like these are all like family of each other right so for example um okay because i put i use black in here so let me use black in here also these two are a family of the direct way because we use a direct radius, a positive radius, while these two in here are a family of each other because we use the indirect way where we have negative radius for the outer side or the opposite direction of the radius, okay? So at, at the end of the day, you'll have only like two methods to represent like one, um, one point, but you have like many ways, you have like multiple ways to represent it by keep changing or playing around with your angles. Okay, so um, please try the example in here and let me know if that works. So in here, there's no trick because for your um, case, I want to keep it simple because I don't want to uh, like throw a curveball, you guys. That's why I keep the the radius to be a positive number. And in here, if you want, you can go ahead and convert this number to radius. I mean, to degrees. Um, find out that degrees and then make sure you keep that point like four um, units away from the pole in here and then you draw your vector and then you have your point. After that, do the indirect way to get like the negative radius. In this case, it's gonna be like negative four and then play around with the angle. Okay, so the answer to your um, try problem, it should be something like four and then three pi over four because that's like what the problem gives you first. And then there's another like four in here and then the angle where you like play around with the angle in here. And another two way to do it is when you have the indirect way, when we have the negative, um, radius and the way that you figure out the angle in here you must draw the picture ours is going to be like super hard for you to do it and then if you continue to do it you're going to have like a negative four in here and then play around with play around with this angle and then you're going to have like the last way to represent it okay if you have any question please let me know or like just email me okay and let's move on to the next one okay so in the last page i was running out of broom so that's why i didn't like include this picture in here but technically this uh the four diagrams in here it represent what i just told you guys so for the direct way we have like three ways to do it these three are for like just one family if you notice the radius in here are all like positive let me backtrack in here backtrack again okay let me uh highlight this one this one is positive positive and positive while the other one is negative or like the indirect way, right? And the way that we figure out the angle is that from like pi over four or like 45 degrees, we play around with it. You go for another circle and you have like nine pi over four. If you don't want to go for another circle, you go backward and then you have the negative version of pi over four, okay? If you're like sick of like playing with the direct way and if you want to like make it more challenging, so you're gonna go for the indirect way, the one in here. What do I mean by the indirect way? Um, as you can see, we have like two um, vector of radius in here. The indirect way is just saying that you're gonna use the other version of your radius to, to obtain the angle, okay? So technically you kept like using the radius, but you make it negative because you want to use the, the other angle. You don't want to use the direct angle, okay? That's why you have like five pi over four in here instead of pi over four, okay? So make sure you know like which one, which angle works for like which radius in here, okay? In case you have like the indirect um, way, okay? Don't get confused with the angles. If you do, let me know, please let me know, okay? And uh, the second topic of the day is, is when we have to convert from a polar coordinate to a rectangular coordinate. 
So at the beginning of the today's lesson, I told you guys there are two. Well, at least in this semester, we're gonna learn about two coordinates, right? X Y coordinates is when we like learn from like college algebra when you um study in like high school or something like that. Like we all know X Y coordinate, we just have like two numbers, right? The first number would represent the X coordinate, and then the second number would represent the second coordinate for like the Y coordinate. Okay. And now we're gonna talk about the the um the connection between polar coordinate and rectangular coordinate. So back in the day, I always told you guys that x represents the cosine and then y represents the sine because we were talking about the unit circles, right? And in the unit circle, because it's unit, so r is one because it's like unit, right? But like outside of the world, like. All, not all circles have to be like unit, right? Like some circle could have different radius. If I throw at you guys like a circle with radius four, you guys have to work with it, right? There's no like reason to turn it back to a radius one, right? We have to accept different radius to make like more problems, I guess, or to learn more properties properties about like trick and then circles. That's why in here I'm gonna uh, attach radius in here. So. It's different a tiny little bit compared to the definition that we learned like a couple weeks ago. It's not going to be like x equal to cosine anymore. It's x equal to r times cosine now. And with a similar logic, we're going to have y equals to r times sine rather than y equals to sine, okay? So make sure you have the r in here. Don't forget the r. r in here is a big key point. And then just a heads up, like in the, in the, in the question, if they give you radius and then you haven't used it, Automatically, you will know that there's something wrong because you haven't used up all the data that the, that the problem gives you, right? So you will know anyways. Okay, so uh, like uh, just real quick in here. So a polar coordinate, it can be represented by R and theta. We just learned about it. And then back in the day, we learned that a point could be represented by X and Y. So the connection would be X equal to R cosine theta and then Y equals to R times side theta, okay? So let's talk about the first example um, or like the example of this topic in here. Let's say I give you a point, okay? And this point here, how do you know whether it's in polar or is in rectangular coordinate? The problem will tell you that, right? Like for this case in here, this point, it equals to the polar coordinate system. So the first point here, I mean the first coordinate in here would be R and the second coordinate would be theta, okay? So don't get, okay, so at the beginning, I will tell you guys, when looking at this one, at first I thought that it's going to be in like x, y coordinate, right? And then the x would be like 8.1 and the y would be like 5.2. And automatically I would know that, well, this is like in quadrant one, right? Like, because everything is positive. But no, that's wrong. Why? Because this one, the problem, the point is given to us in the polar coordinates, right? And in polar coordinates, there's no x, y. So it doesn't work the same way that we we'll, we learned before. So this part in here, I always told you guys to go like a little bit backwards. So we're not going to look from like right to left as we do in like X, Y coordinate anymore. We're going to look from right to left, not like left to right. That's what I meant. We can, okay, so let me write it down here. For polar coordinates, we going to um, determine theta first and then R secondly. So we go from right to left and in X, Y coordinate, where we have like an x point here, we're gonna go from left to right where we determine the x part first and then we determine the y part secondly, okay? So with that saying in here, I want you to wonder or like ask yourself, where is 5.2, right? Like where is 5.2 as radian? So a quick definition about radian is that remember 360 degrees is two pi, right? And pi is 2.14, okay? So two pi would be 6.28. And as you can see, 6.20 is bigger than 5.2, but 3.14 is like smaller than 5.2, right? So that means that 5.2 is something in between like question three, I would say, or question four even. So how do we know where which one it is, right? So let me have like draw it out in here somewhere so that you guys can remember it. Okay, let me abuse like this diagram that we, we had in here. So just imagine like if there's like invisible walls in here, that tells you guys the four quadrant. Okay, so we know that this position is always zero. And in here we have a pi, which is like 3.14. And another way to write zero would be like two pi or like 6.28. And on top in here, we're going to have 
uh, pi divided by 2 are like 90 degrees. So we're going to do something like 3.14 divided by 2. And then we're going to have like 5.57 in here. And down there we have 370. I mean 270 are like uh, 3 pi over 2. Which is 3 times 3.14 divided by 2. And we get something like 4.71. Okay. So this system is, is in radians, okay? So it's in radians, just in case we have like decimal with bad numbers and you have to make sure like how to, to know how to locate your point, okay? So the point that we have in here is 5.2, right? So 5.2 is not in here, it's not in here either, and it's not in here either because 5.2 is bigger than 4.71, right? So it must be something in here, okay? So let's say it's in there. Okay, let's get back to the picture that I drew in, that I drew, drew, uh, I drew in here. This is my 5.2 radian, okay? And again, 5.2 radian because it's bigger than 4.71, okay? Not because it's in like x, y coordinate when you have like everything positive in quadrant one and negative in like different like other quadrants, okay? So in here, if you blindly think that like if it's positive in quadrant one, you, you will be wrong because... Chances are you most likely to have like all positive numbers, right? If you look at all the numbers in here, they all positive. Like none of them are negative, right? So watch out for that. Don't base off on the idea of x, y coordinate anymore for like polar coordinate because they are two different systems in here, okay? If you thinking about using negative for like question two, question three, or question four, chances are you might get it wrong, okay? So make sure you know what to do with the radian system in polar coordinate, okay? And after that, we look from right to left, right? So we we done with using like 5.2. Now let's talk about 8.1 in here. So we're gonna go 8.1 like units away from the polar. That's why we have the point right here, right? And now the question is asking us to draw or like to find a point in x, y coordinate, right? So how can we do that? We know that x equals to r times cosine theta and y equals to r times sine theta. So we just plug it in, right? So we plug it in, in here, we plug it into your calculator and we, we get the answer. Done, okay? No big deal, right? And in here, I want you guys to do the algebra in here. So of course, you know your r and you know your theta. So like algebraically, you can plug in to the calculator and get your answer as like x and y for like the coordinate in here. But I also want you guys to um, think about the pictures in here. So I want you guys to draw like the polar system in here and also draw the xy system in here y my pen sometimes it doesn't work i'm trying to write y in here but it doesn't let me there we go xy okay and um the way that i draw the point in the pole in the xy system in here okay let me also write in here so this one is my polar and this one is what my xy Okay, so after I get the answer for this one, so three point, um, so this is x and the other one is y, right? So we all know how to plot it in x, y coordinate, right? So I just plot it and it's right here. And if you think about it, this is this one is in four quadrant. This one is also in four quadrant. So to double check yourself, you know that you're you know that you're right because they in the exact same place. Okay, so please do me a favor and draw out the pictures in here for polar coordinate and also x, y coordinate to double check on yourself to make sure that your point on the two systems are in the same place, okay? And let's talk about the next page in here. Okay, so we learn about how to convert from polar to rectangular coordinates, right? How about the other way around? How about like, what, what if we want to convert from rectangular coordinate back to polar coordinates what should we do right so if you guys remember like back in the day when we first learned about the unit circle in there we had something like um like right triangle inside a unit circle right so say we can uh pen i need a pen there okay so we have like an xy system in here and then we have a unit circle in here and then every point a unit circle represent like um like corresponding to like uh some sort of like psi and cosine system in there based on the length of the arc that you travel. So in here we're gonna have a right triangle and say theta is right here and then every point would be represented by cosine here and then sine here. I'm running out of space so let me use shortcut uh, C for cosine of theta and then S for sine of theta. 
And my C looks weird a little bit, so let me represent it. I mean, write again. Okay, cosine first and then psi secondly, right? And in every unit circle in here, the radius in here would be R, right? So if you think about it, we're going to have like um, X squared in here plus Y squared in here equal to R squared by the Pythagorean um, identity. No, not identity, by the Pythagorean theorem. There we go. We have something like C squared equals to A squared plus B squared, right? So that's like a trick or like the quick way or like the derivation for having the formula of R squared equals to X squared plus Y squared, okay? And the other formula that I want you guys to memorize is this one. Okay, so let me box this one as well. The second one is when we have like tension of theta equals to y divided by x. If you want to know why, let's talk about like the picture in here when we have the right triangle. Tension of theta, tension, Sokotoa, tension equals to opposite divided by hypotenuse. I mean, I mean tension equals to opposite divided by adjacent, right? So opposite to theta in here, we have y. And then adjacent to theta in here, we have x. That's why we have tension of theta equals to y divided by x, okay? So, in fact, every time you want to, like, recall these formulas in here, you just have to draw, like, a little diagram as I did in here instead of, like, try to memorize all of this because chances are you guys going to forget it, right? So just remember you start out by drawing, like, a unit circle in there and then draw, like, a right triangle in the first quadrant called theta and then label all around. The x part will be x, the y part will be y, and then the radius would be r. And then think about the Pythagorean theorem inside a right triangle. And after that, think about the tangent function inside that right triangle. And then you're going to end up having the two formulas in here. Okay? And then I give you some sort of like steps in here. Like I give you like an ally of three steps to convert from a rectangular coordinate to a polar coordinate. So the first step in here, like when the problem gives you a point, you have to plot it, right? And it gives you a point in rectangular coordinate. That means you have to, uh, to plot it in the xy coordinate. And after that, you're going to compute the distance between the point to the origin, which is r. Okay. And notice that the formula in here has a square, right? Like this one is r square equals to x square plus y square. So when you want to find r, you have to take the square root of it. So make sure you don't forget to take the square root of it. Or else you're going to have like a humongous like number in there. And that will tell you there's something wrong with your own answer, okay? So make sure you take the square of it. And the last step in here, because in polar coordinate, we're going to need um, R and we also need theta, right? So then after we get R, we're going to need to find theta, which is the angle measurement. Okay, so to find that, you're going to need to compute the angle measurement starting from the polar axis to the ray connecting to the pole and the point P to get theta, okay? It's a lot of talking, I know, but then uh, it's going to make more sense when we get to the example in the next second. And just to double check whether your answer is right or wrong, make sure you match, like, the two pictures, one from the polar system and the other one from the XY system, like what we did before. So you're always going to have, like, two systems in this um, section here. One is a polar coordinate, and then the other one is XY system. For polar coordinates, make sure you have a pole and a polar axis, and everything is positive, right? Like, uh, chances are, uh, most of the time, it's going to be positive, okay? So, if it's decimal, make sure you know that pi equals to, like, 3.14. And then you use your math or, like, you do your algebra to figure out what is pi divided by 2. 3 pi divided by 2 and then 2 pi is in decimal, okay? So, all of them are positive. Make sure you don't trip over that. And then in XY system, is is back to the regular system that we know where we have, like, negative... X, for example, in the second um, quotient, negative uh, Y in the fourth quotient. And we also have like negative X and negative Y in the third quotient. Like everything should be normal in like X, Y coordinate, right? So the thing that I, I'm concerned here is the polar coordinate. Make sure um, sometimes just because it's positive, it might not end up in quotient one. Okay, so be cautious about that. Okay, so again, three sets in here because we need something in coordinate in here. First of all, we need to plot it. Secondly, we need to get R. Thirdly, we need to get theta and like the fourth step in here. Um, I included in here, but next time I'm going to make it separate is that the fourth step, you have to double check by drawing your two coordinates, okay? You you plot your P in XY coordinate already, but make sure you draw your P also in polar coordinate to double check your answer to see if the points match each other or no, okay? Let's talk about the example in here. So the problem, it gives you the xy um, coordinate already so this one is an xy coordinate and if you draw it out 
you're going to have it end up in question two because the x part in here is negative and the y part in here is positive. Okay? After that, you go for step two where you find a distance. So this part, you just have to plug in the formula, right? Like R equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. The formula is right here. You plug in numbers. You plug in to the calculator. You get the answer. Okay? And after that, the third step, you have to find theta. So theta in here it equals to tangent inverse of y divided by x. Why? Because tangent equals to y divided by x, right? So if you want to solve for theta only, make sure you use the inverse. So don't ever forget the inverse. Don't blindly just apply like tangent to whatever. So in this case in here, for example, for the inside in here, after I calculate the inside by doing 0.2 divided by negative 3 point, no, 2.3, I got something like, okay, I really hate when I have to uh, write up the numbers during the process. But for example, let's say I got something like 0.08, uh, seven. Okay. For example, in here, at this step right here, I must do tension inverse of negative point zero a seven. It will give me the right answer. And if you forgot, and then you do tension of negative point zero a seven, this is wrong. Okay, like this is a big no no. Don't do that ever ever ever, because you're gonna get the wrong answer. So please mark my word down. Don't do this. Don't do not do this at all. Okay. This one in here is tangent inverse. You must have the little one in here. You must use the inverse function. Don't just blindly use a calculator putting like tension up whatever answer you get for the inside in there. It's going to get you wrong answer. Okay. And if you do the right step in here by using the inverse function, you're going to get the answer as negative 0 0.09 here. Okay. So putting everything together you will have a different answer. Why? Okay, so this is why this, the fourth step is really important because if you just slightly input like, okay, so at this step in here, let me write out the, the, the point here. So we all know that the pol polar coordinate system, it goes like r comma theta, right? So r in here, we know that it equals to 2.3 and the theta in here, we had it equals to negative 0 0.09. If we, were, um, if we were to go ahead and draw it, we're gonna have it right here, okay? Like 2.3 is like, it's positive, it's like the direct way to do it. And negative 0 0.09, so this one is negative, so it means that you have to go counterclockwise in here. And then you end up having this position in here, the blue P in here. But then you compare it back to the XY picture that you have in here, P is in quotient two, and your P and your blue P in here is in quotient four. And then you wonder why is it in quotient four, right? Like that's a weird thing. We shouldn't have it in quotient four. That's why you have to add it up by pi to get it to the other side to get it to quotient two, okay? And if you were to do it, you're gonna get it like this. So I would recommend you guys doing negative 0 0.09 plus pi rather than doing negative 0 0.09 plus 2.14 because 3.14 3 is just like a routing number. So that like is not the accurate number sometimes. And you don't want to use 3.14 unless you must do it on a test because uh, chances are you're gonna get like your answer off like um, one or two digits from like my answer. And when that happens, uh, I might deduct your points for like, uh, like minor point, like one or two points, but you wanna get like every point you can. So I would recommend using pi rather than 3.14, okay? So you're going to end up having to find the answer to be 2.3 and then 3.1, okay? So again, we could have stopped in here. We can, we could have caught an answer, but no, this is not our answer. Why? Because it's in a different question compared to the, to the XY coordinate in here. That's why we have to add it up by pi. We have to shoot it across the pole to get the other version of the radius to get the right point, okay? So that's why the four step checking by drawing the picture is always, 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 always important, okay? Like if you don't draw the, the pictures, you never know whether your point is right or wrong because if it doesn't match, like the two picture, if they don't match, you're gonna get the wrong answer, okay? So I want you guys to try these answers in here and right off the bat because like um, the X in here and Y in here are both negative. So I'm gonna tell you guys a hint. This one is in question four, okay? So it will be something in here. Okay, so for your point in here, you should expect something in here. 
it's not going to be something in the first question, second question, or third question. Okay, so check it. Let me know if like it works out, or like if you confuse or you have any problem with it. Okay. Okay. Last topic of the day. How can we transform equations from polar to rectangular form? So uh, I'm gonna give you guys two common ways. There is a word ways in here, but I forgot to put it. I'm getting old these days, and then I just forget a lot of things. So there are two common ways. There's my V in here, but it doesn't look nice. So ah, okay. Let me just put a text in here, maybe. Oh no, hold up. I'm so bad with this one. I'm sorry. Okay, let me just do V in here, and then I'm just gonna put ways. Okay, there are two common ways for transferring an equation from polar to rectangular form. Okay, the first one is when you multiply both sides by R, and the second way, way is that when you square both sides of the equation. How do I know which one to use, to, uh, like in, in when or like in which problem? Honestly, if you do it in applied practice, you will automatically know. Um, chances are when you see the squared, you have to like square it up already. It's just like when you see a minus, you have to think about addition, and when you see like times or like multiplication you have to think about division like back in the day when you use for when you solve for like equations and um how do you know when to multiply both sides by r well i guess you can just try it out at the beginning if you don't know what to do and if it doesn't work you, you use the second way by squaring it up okay like this one is just like try and arrows like you try the first one and if it doesn't work use the other one and if you try the second one first and if it doesn't work use the first one okay and uh, just a heads up in here, I want you guys to recall all the algebra techniques that we learned from the past, like cross multiplication. And remember, cross multiplication is only, only apply when you have the equal, like when you have the equal sign in between. If you don't have the equal sign in between, you cannot use cross multiplication, okay? So I, lot of, I saw a lot of like things like this happen. So for example, if I have something like one divided by four and an x divided by two, like this with the times in between, do not use cross multiplication in here because in between them is multiplication. So what you're gonna do is that, okay, let me get rid of the cross in here before it gets to your head. So what you're gonna do is that you multiply them like crossway. So then the answer to this one, it equals to x divided by eight, okay? While if I have something like one divided by four equals to x divided by two, this time I'm gonna do cross multiplication and I'm gonna have something like two equals to four x. And I continue to work to like solve for x, right? But remember, cross multiplication, it only applies when you have the equal sign. If you don't have the equal sign, if you have something else, if you have like division symbol, multiplication symbol, or like some weird ugly symbol, don't ever use cross multiplication in here. The only special uh, feature about cross multiplication is when you have the equal sign between. So make sure you only use cross multiplication when you have the equal sign, okay? Mark my word out, equal sign, okay? And then uh, what do I mean by the special A formulas in here? You can find the special A formulas in here in the previous section. When you had, when I put something down like the sum of square and then the difference of square and then the square of sum and then the difference of sum, like a, uh, a typical formula would look like, some, would look something like A plus B all square equals to A square plus two AB plus B square. And then if you have a minus sign here, then this one will be minus. And then I also have something for like the cube. This one is my Q, not my five, but it looks weird. Let me change it to a nicer three. Come on. There. And then I also have something like a square minus b square, and then a cube minus b cubed, and then a cube plus p b cubed or something like that. So that's what I mean by the the, the special a formulas, okay? And make sure you know your factoring method too. Like make sure you know the X method, diamond method, the box method, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the AC method also is very important sometimes too. Or grouping method too. Like they all like factoring methods. Okay. So let's talk about the first example in here. Okay. For this example in here. So um, first, of all, first uh, thing first. You're going to ask me uh, should I use the first way or should I use the second way. And I'm going to tell you guys. We're not going to use it yet. Why? Because R in here is R over 1, right? 
And if we have like an equation in there, we can apply the cross multiplication technique in here. So let me erase this one and let me put the one underneath of the the R. It doesn't let me. There we go. Ah. There we go. So R is R divided by one, right? After we have the fractions in here and then the equal size in between, we're gonna um, cross multiply them. So this cross in here will give us three. And the outer cross, we have to distribute the R into three and a negative cosine. So we're gonna have something like three R minus R cosine theta, okay? And after that, what do we do? Because we don't have any squared, so we're not gonna square it yet. Probably not yet, or probably we don't even need to use the squaring method in here. Instead of that, we're going to try to multiply both sides by R, so we're going to use the first method in here. Okay? After that, uh, what do we do? What do I do in here? Oh, guess what? I didn't even multiply it by R. Hmm, let me think about why. Oh, actually, that's a good question. Guess why I don't multiply by R? Because... I knew that it's gonna turn out to be something nicer. That's why I don't multiply by R. So like what I said earlier, like I give you the two common ways to do it, but sometimes you don't have to use it, okay? So try to play around with it, like do all the algebra first, like if it works out and it works, okay? Like you, sometimes you don't have to use any of the methods that I recommend in here. For example, this one is the one. So we know that R in here, it equals to, okay, let me give you guys some formula also. Um, let me remind you that r it equals to or like r square equals to x square plus y square and we also know that x equals to r cosine theta and then y equals to r psi theta okay so before i need to use any of the two ways that i recommend you guys i will try my best to do to like when I get stuck. Okay, so after I multiply by cross multiplication, I go ahead and I replace my R with uh, the square root of X squared plus Y squared. And then R cosine theta, that would be my X. So I go ahead and I uh, replace my X in there. And after that, I, I will solve for, I will isolate the square root. Okay, and after that, I'm gonna square up both sides. So actually, I do use a second method in here, I guess. So I swear up both sides in here. So on the left-hand side, I'm going to get something like x plus 3 times x plus 3. So if you follow it in, you're going to get something like x squared plus 3x plus another 3x, like first inner and outer, and then last, which is 9. I can buy the lie term, and I end up having x squared plus 6x plus 9. On the right-hand side in here, 3 squared is 9, so I'm going to get something like 9. And then square root of x squared plus y squared, when you square up, the square root would disappear. It canceled out with a square. So on the inside, I'm going to get something like x squared plus y squared. And after that, I'm going to distribute the 9 inside. So I end up having 9x squared plus 9y squared. Okay. And after that, I move everything to one side and I have um, ax squared minus 6x plus 9y squared minus 9 equal to 0. You can stop in here because you cannot go further. Um, you cannot solve for either x or y because you can just you just can't, right? So in the test, um, if you want, um, you can ask me if you if I want you guys to go further a little bit or you can stop right there. Chances are you probably like overthink and then you could have stopped like, um, like at the moment that you thought um, you could before you complicated it, okay? So in the test or in the exam or in the quiz, just ask me if you have to, okay? So in this case in here, if you remember the ellipse equation, it's gonna look like an ellipse, but um, I didn't ask you guys to like describe the form of it or like the, the graph of it. So in the test, it's okay if you forget what it is, but though, like if it looks like a linear equation, if it looks like a line, you guys have to know it, okay? When do you have a line? It, you have a line or like a, a linear equation when you don't have a, a, any power on x or y or you can say you have like the first power on x and on y for example you can have something like x plus y equals three or like y equals to like three plus x or something like that like none of x or y has like extra power okay that's when you have a line or like a linear function okay in that case you have to tell me 
that that you have a line. You have to describe the graph of like the function. Okay. So for that example, I want you guys to try this example in here. And just a heads up in here. If you compare this term to y, if you compare this term to x, you will see that these two are really close to the formula already, right? They're just missing an r in, in, in front of them. So that's a good hint for using the first method in here, multiply both sides by r. Okay, so the first step in here, because you don't have any fractions, so then there's no use of cross multiplication, right? So the first step in here, you might want to multiply everything by R. And then after that, you go with the flow, okay? For the second example in here, transfer the following equation from rectangle uh, to polar form, right? So in here, we talked about how to transfer, to how to transform an equation from polar to rectangle already. How about the other way around? So this one in here, I would say this one is the easy way because we already know the formula for x and for y. So we're just going to go ahead and apply it to x and y in here, okay? So again, I will recall like the formula for x and y in here. After that, I start with the right side. I use one because it looks easier. And then on the left hand side, this one, I rewrite a problem. This step in here, I plug in x for r times cosine and then co cosine of theta and then y for r times sine of theta. After that, I take care of the square in here, and then I multiply everything together, and then I write out what I have, like, eventually for the left-hand side and then my right-hand side. And then, what else do I do after that? Uh, let me think. Do I do anything after that? Oh, okay. So, you can stop in here if you want to, because the purpose of having like the polar form is when you have r and theta, right? Like you get rid of x and y. So you can stop in here and call it an answer. Like right here if you want. But you know, like just to be fancy, uh, because we learn about like the the double angle already. So we can um, use one of the cosine here and use sine here and use like one of the two in here put them together and then the left hand side it could turn out to be like two times r cubed and then cosine of theta times sine of two theta this time for using the double angle identity okay so you can stop in here if you want to you don't have to be like fancy and stop in here if you don't want to because sometimes i find it's hard to like i'm i used to be a student too right so i i know how hard it is to like put everything together so if you don't want to you don't have to stop it here okay but either way is fine like if you want to challenge yourself stop in here if you want to or like there's like a lot of version to this um final answer okay so play around with this problem in here and let me know if that works okay so thank you for your listening and take care and stay healthy bye bye